Can quitting alcohol slow the aging process? This is what the science says. Now, if you clicked on this video, you're probably interested in longevity, in making sure that your health lasts for as long as you can, probably so you can live your life in the way that you want for as long as possible. I mean, who wouldn't want to be as healthy as they possibly can for as long as they can? Well, the thing is, if you're drinking alcohol, this might actually be working against you. My name's Dr. Alex George, and I've been alcohol-free for over two years, and I've learned so much about alcohol-free living and the benefits to your health. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. We release a new video every single Sunday to support your health. Okay, let's get started. Now, longevity is a fascinating subject and area of science. It is something we've talked about so much more in recent years. If you look at podcasts, for example, or health sites, Longevity is one of the key things that people want to talk about. They want to learn about how do I live longer? How do I live healthier? How can I be fitter and more capable for a longer period of time? See, in science and medicine, in the past, we always talked about how do we increase like, lifespan? How do we live longer? But do you really want to live longer if your health is rubbish? You surely want as many healthy life years as you possibly can, as many illness-free life years as you possibly can. And the thing is, alcohol actually can play a huge role in this aging process. And we're gonna go through the science of why this is. First, let's talk about what alcohol does to your body. So alcohol is a toxin. There's no way of getting around that at all. Alcohol is literally a toxin. We used to use it in the hospitals to clean our hands with, you know, the ch -ch -ch pushy things, put your hands out there. That's alcohol, why? Because it kills everything. It's really effective to disinfect things and to kill bacteria because it's really harmful. We take that thing, we put it in a bottle and we drink it. Why? Because it gives us a certain feeling, okay? But that feeling of potentially feeling good or elated doesn't mean it doesn't cause problems in our body. And unfortunately, when it comes to aging, the, the story is pretty stark. I mean, there are many ways that it causes aging. We're gonna talk through a few of them now. First of all, alcohol is a diuretic. So when you have a drink, you'll notice often after the first pint or so, the tap opens and you need to go for a wee and you find yourself going back and forth to the toilet all night. And you also notice when you go for a wee, even though it's the fourth time in the evening, gosh, it's really clear. That's odd. The reason is, is because it tells your kidneys to lose more water, effectively. It tells your body, you've got too much water, kick it out. The problem is, that isn't true. It's actually dehydrating you. So when you consume alcohol, even in lots of quantities, it dehydrates your body. Dehydration is bad news for your skin, bad news for your organs, and bad news for aging. The more dehydrated you are, the more damage we do to ourselves, and the quicker the aging process is. So one of the big things about drinking, particularly with your skin, is it dehydrates your skin and causes damage to the elasticity and to the collagen of your skin, which means, unfortunately, you age faster. A study in 2019 from the journal Clinical Cosmetic and Investigational Dermatology, there's a mouthful, found that drinking alcohol accelerates aging by depleting the body of nutrients and antioxidants. So really highlighting that point of the damage it can do in the aging process. Because alcohol is a toxin, it causes inflammation throughout our bodies. And an area that it causes a lot of inflammation and damage is in our skin, our collagen. So effectively, inflammation in our skin causes wrinkling and the appearance of aging. Alcohol is pro-inflammatory. It's pro-inflammatory in the brain, in the liver, in the gut, in our skin. Wherever it causes inflammation, it is speeding up the process of aging. It is damaging cells and making their function and, yes, their appearance when it comes to skin worse. The liver, which is on this side, the right-hand side, just below your rib cage, is an incredible organ. It's there to do, well, lots of different things, but importantly, it helps deal with toxins. Now, as we said, alcohol is a toxin. So guess who's got to deal with it? The liver. The problem is, with the liver dealing with that toxin, it actually causes damage. The process of dealing with the alcohol, if consumed at high enough levels, causes damage. Now, when we talk about safe limits of alcohol, this has changed and it does become very confusing. The only safe limit of alcohol for your liver and for your body is zero units. Anything above that you can't say is a safe amount of alcohol. There's no such thing. What we know is that when someone consumes over 14 units a week, there is an acceleration in the curve of consequences in terms of their physical health. So what we're saying is not that it's, oh, you're absolutely safe if you have under 14 units a week, but that if you go above 14 units, your chance of problems is much higher. And one of those areas that can cause a lot of problems, of course, is your liver. 
Now, what happens in the liver is that it takes the alcohol, it breaks down into a compound that is less harmful and we excrete it out the body. But unfortunately, over time, at high enough quantities, it actually damages the liver itself. Now, of course, the liver can regenerate if you quit alcohol, but the level to which it can regenerate is often over-assumed or over-emphasized, whatever the word is. The problem is, is that alcohol does do damage that can be irreversible, so it can cause scarring in the liver. The good news, though, is that when you quit alcohol, for most people, the regeneration of the liver is profound. It can recover to a real, a real degree. And even for people who have, say, alcohol, uh, severe alcohol liver damage, quitting alcohol is the single most important thing that can in extend their lifespan and improve their health. So definitely quitting booze can make a huge difference there. A study from the Journal of Hepatology found that when you quit alcohol, the liver can recover in as little as four to eight weeks, which is incredible. But the important message is don't think that's a reason just to bash the liver for ages and then quit because you can do more damage than you realize. Now, where does the liver come in in terms of aging? Well, one of the ways it's important is that it helps deal with oxidative stress. A healthy liver deals with toxins. The problem is, if you're drinking, it's got less capacity to deal with oxidative stress, with free radicals and so on, and toxins, which means those uh, toxins can go around the body and damage things like your skin and your brain and cause aging. So it's really important to have a healthy liver to mean that we age at a normal rate. Right, the topic of brain health and alcohol is fascinating and it is kind of scary. So there's lots of different research out there showing that if you drink even as little as a few glasses of wine a week, it can impact your working memory, the, the size of your brain, and yes, the aging process. We know that those who drink a lot more alcohol or drink alcohol at significant quantities have a much higher risk of developing things like dementia um, and cognitive decline. On the opposite side, people who don't drink alcohol are so much more likely to maintain memory, cognition, um, and the ability to actually, well, be present for as long as they possibly can and stave off things like dementia as much as possible. So what alcohol actually does to the brain is it causes shrinking of the brain, atrophy over time, which is not a very nice thing to think of. What we want for as long as possible is a skull that's full of brain. We want to have lots of brain cells that we're able to function for as long as possible. That's in a very simple sense, but it's obvious. Alcohol, unfortunately, damages the brain so that you're losing tissue matter and it shrinks away. And that, of course, gets worse over time. Can we rebuild brain cells if we stop drinking? No, we can't. But what we can do is we can slow and stop that decline in that steep way with alcohol. The other important thing that happens when you quit alcohol is you create new synapses. The brain is incredible. Neuroplasticity, neuroplasticity is incredible. So it allows the brain to remodel and find new pathways and improve, which is why when you quit alcohol a few months later, you do feel sharper and better because the brain is incredible at adapting. Let's talk weight loss and metabolism. So per gram is about seven calories in alcohol. It's very, very calorific. If you think of a bottle of red wine, it's 600 plus calories. A pint of beer is 250, 300 calories. When you're drinking that and consuming the food that you often do with it, you're piling on the calories. It's why it's so difficult to keep the weight off when you're drinking. It's also really hard because alcohol is preferentially used as an energy source by the body when you drink. So usually, if you go and exercise, you'll burn your glucose first, then you'll be working on your fats, and very late stage, you'll work on your protein, your muscles to get stores of energy. The problem is the body loves to burn alcohol. So if you've drunk alcohol and you've had maybe five, 600 calories of alcohol, before you can get to the glucose, and the fat that you want to burn, you've got to burn the alcohol. If you do a HIIT class that's really hard for an hour, you might burn four or 500 calories. If you drunk four or 500 calories that night, that's all you're going to be burning is the alcohol you've drunk. And if you've had even more than that, yes, it will get stored in your body despite the exercise. Why is weight important? Because we know that excess weight, that the damage by things like diabetes you can get from you know, obesity, from poor sugar control, causes inflammation in the body and inflammation means aging. So excess weight, particularly in the context of um, prediabetes or diabetes, can really affect the aging process. We also know that if you have excess weight and you're unable to be as functional and to exercise, to move as much, the lack of exercise or the prevention of you doing as much exercise as you would have done is kind of an indirect cause of aging. Because we, we know that one of the best things you can do to keep your brain younger and all of your organs younger and your skin younger is to exercise. It is one of the very, very best things to do. And annoyingly, alcohol gets in the way of that. 
alcohol stops us from effectively being able to engage in physical movement in our lives. So some of the effects of alcohol and the causes of its aging is direct, some of it is indirect. A 2018 study in obesity showed that quitting alcohol increased and boosted metabolism by 5 to 10%. That is a huge gain. Five to 10% is a massive gain. Then add on that the calories that you're removing by not having it and the increased movement, the change in your body is profound. And of course, being fitter and healthier is gonna benefit things like aging. So it's a really positive part of quitting alcohol. Let's talk about what happens to your skin when you quit alcohol. So your skin is the first thing that people see. And that's the bit that often people do worry about in terms of aging, which is understandable. So what happens when you quit alcohol? Well, a study in the British Journal of Dermatology found that after one month of cessating or quitting alcohol, there was a 30% improvement in hydration of the skin. So it, what it shows is that when you quit alcohol, your skin becomes more hydrated. And hydration is super important for elasticity, for healthy collagen, for maintaining the skin barrier, and effectively keeping your skin looking young and fresh. I definitely noticed when I quit alcohol a huge change in my skin. In fact, I would say of everything people noticed, other than the weight loss, which came later, people really said, oh my God, your skin looks so good. It's glowing, the puffiness is gone. It just, the, the quality of your skin looks really good. And that's partly due to the hydration, but also the effects or the improvements in the nutrients in your skin. Uh, alcohol depletes nutrients like vitamin A, which is really important for your skin. But also, alcohol encourages free radicals and toxins that damage your skin. Not drinking alcohol provides a healthy environment for, for your skin, your collagen and your elastin to flourish and to, be, yeah, to maintain its function. Apart from the aging part of things, looking after your skin is also really important for function because healthy skin protects us. Our skin is so important. It provides a means to absorb important things like vitamin D. It provides a barrier to outside things like infections. And also, yes, of course, it's one of the things that shows who we are, that identifies us, that people recognize as part of, well, you. So looking after that important part of you is very, very important indeed. Okay, what about the long-term benefits of quitting alcohol in terms of aging? Now, inside each cell, we have what's called a telomere. This is a strand of DNA that kind of provides the lifespan of that cell. So as it shortens, the cell ages. Now, interestingly, in cancer cells, there's an issue with how the telomeres act. So the telomeres either don't shorten or change. And that means that cancer cells often will survive much, much longer than normal cells, which is part of the problem. Now, in healthy cells, what we don't want to do is shorten those telomeres faster than needed. So yes, you probably guessed it, alcohol causes the shortening of telomeres, which is not good for aging. The good news is, in research in the American Journal of Epidemiology, they found that quitting alcohol stop this process of shortening telomeres, i.e. it allowed the telomeres to age naturally and therefore, of course, meant that we slowed that aging process or probably more accurately, we stopped speeding it up. And another part of that kind of chronic view of aging is inflammation. And go back to this point again and again because it's so important. Alcohol causes inflammation. Inflammation is bad for aging. If you think about it, most of the beauty industry, cosmetic industry, in terms of their treatments and creams and so on, are using different kind of chemicals and compounds and ways of tackling inflammation. They want to reduce inflammation, boost the health of the skin, and therefore allow it to age normally. Alcohol works right against all of that and inflames everything. So quitting alcohol is an amazing way to slow down aging. So quitting alcohol is an amazing way to slow down aging, not just for the skin, but for every part of your body. Global reduction of inflammation is good, not just actually for aging, but also things like cancers and so on. Not all inflammation is bad, of course. We need inflammation to deal with things like infection. It plays an important role in our stress response, but chronic inflammation in general isn't good. So if you've watched this video and you've gone, okay, I really like the idea of aging more slowly, I want to have a healthier, longer life, then do check out my videos on how to quit alcohol, tips on creating new habits, new routines, that means you can let the booze go forever. So in summary, I do genuinely believe that it is really worth, if you're thinking about aging in a more healthy way, it is really worth quitting the booze because the story is quite stark when it comes to it. The good news is though, when you quit the alcohol, you can get back on the right track. I definitely look a lot younger than when I was drinking. In fact, lots of people said I looked 10 years older when I was in the height of my drinking. Maybe, I don't know, perhaps they're being kind. 
Either way, I definitely feel younger for leaving the booze behind. I hope this video was useful. Let me know in the comments what you think about this discussion. If you work in science, perhaps, perhaps you're someone that's worked in research, maybe you've just noticed certain benefits that we haven't discussed. Please leave them in the comments below and thank you for making it such a supportive and kind place. Right guys, I'll come to the end of the video. Take care and goodbye.